And let's talk about the recent Supreme Court ruling on affirmative action in higher education in the state of Michigan. Here's the deal. A lot of universities use race as an admissions consideration in order to have a more diverse student body. And there are a lot of reasons you might want a more diverse student body, not just to help people from minority backgrounds get an education, which is a noble goal, and since racism is obviously not dead, um, one that we should be pursuing actively. Also because it helps all of the students in the student body have a more beneficial educational experience when they are exposed to people from all kinds of different backgrounds. If you're going to make it in this world, you have to be able to get along with people from all kinds of different backgrounds, not just from the same background that you're from. So it's really, really helpful to the university as a whole to have a very diverse student body. And that's really hard to do because, you know, most of the people who can afford higher education come from similar backgrounds. Backgrounds with, you know, money, um, education in their ancestry, and, um, you know, white skin. So Michigan universities had affirmative action in place in order to ensure a more diverse student body. Now there are other things you can do to ensure a diverse student body, but they tend not to work quite as well. For a lot of reasons, politicians, especially white politicians, kind of don't like affirmative action. And so they had a referendum to ban affirmative action in Michigan. 58% of the voters in Michigan voted to ban affirmative action. They banned affirmative action. That ban got taken to court, and lower courts overruled the ban on affirmative action. And those that overrule was then appealed, and then the Supreme Court got to hear the case. This situation has far-reaching consequences on several different levels. On, on the one hand, um, upholding the ban on affirmative action would be really, really bad for the diversity of university students in Michigan. And so most people, like myself, who are generally in favor of affirmative action on principle, um, are really sorry to see this ban go forward. On the other hand, affirmative action is, isn't meant to be like a permanent forever and ever and ever thing. It's meant to alleviate a problem, a problem we still very much have. But if you don't have in place any kind of a measure to revoke affirmative action, then whenever affirmative action goes into place, then it could be you can't, it, making it unconstitutional to take it away again could be problematic. I'm not sure I'm making sense here. Justice Sotomayor um, was the sole dissenting opinion, and her opinion, which she apparently read from the bench, is um, that this is a case of the majority, in her words, stacking the deck against the minority in um, terms of ability to have political clout. What this means is, unless you have a really good education, you have a really hard time influencing our political society. And by making it harder for minorities to get a really good education, we're making it harder for them to lobby and participate in our political system. But basically, you have most of the judges saying that affirmative action, in this case, when um, the voters have come forward and said that it's a bad thing. The Constitution is in favor of letting the voters make that decision. And you have one justice saying, oh no, wait, stop. The Constitution is in place so that the majority can't take advantage of the minority. It's really easy for the majority, not even intending to, to take advantage of the minority and to take away their power. And we have to make sure that we don't allow that to happen. I happen to agree with the one dissenting opinion here, but I understand that it's a complicated situation and I would be interested to hear your perspective on this. I hope I've made some sense here. My name is Marilyn, this is Two Awesome Women, and I think you're awesome. Bye-bye!